Okay. So guys, let me set the agenda for the day today. So what what all we are covering uh, as a part of demo class? So we are covering what is the current organization need? I mean, why what what why we are adopting technology uh, DevOps technology every day? What are the organization needs that that forcing them to adopt DevOps? Hmm? Then we'll talk about what are the different benefits of a DevOps, and uh, then we'll we'll talk about the CI/CD, the continuous integration, continuous deployment, in brief. Then we'll also talk about the infrastructure management. So what are the infrastructure management we are doing, and why we are moving to virtualization and containerization stuff like that. Then we'll talk about the the DevOps tools. Uh, what are the different DevOps tools we use on each DevOps life cycle, and then it is followed by the question answer. Yeah. So organization needs. So currently, what organization requirement is? So they they need something a very faster delivery, right? They don't want to wait for a longer period for their application or software or the service. They want you know very quick because can somebody? I think Anish, can you go on a mute? Or please, everyone. Thank you. Okay. So faster delivery is something what organization is 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 the requirement in in today's today's date. They don't want to wait for a longer period for their services. The reason reason is very simple. There is a lot of competition in the market. You know there there is the customer the end user has a lot of choice to switch to one one vendor to another vendor when there is when they don't don't get the the product on time, right? So every organizations you know in 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 a hurry. To release their software or release their product at a fast, fastest growing rate. Hmm? Then at the same time, they want to maintain the high quality because they cannot compromise with the quality. Quality is not a choice, right? Quality is not a choice. If if they compromise with the quality, you know they cannot sustain in the market for a longer period. They want their end user to be, uh, you know, happy, and they want everyone to use their product without any hassle. Right, so the quality should not be compromised at any cost. Okay, now the the major thing is the cost management. So when I when I say cost management, it's nothing but you no. Know, the cost cutting because organization at the same time are looking for the to invest in a lesser cost with the higher productivity. So how this cost cutting takes place? So let's suppose you have a ten of team of ten people. There are five people is of a development, two people are is of testing. You know, so they want to reduce the team size in terms of adopting more automation technologies, adopting more, uh, you know, uh, cloud servers. They don't want any physical servers because physical servers maintenance is high. You know, you need a physical room to place these phys uh, servers. You need somebody twenty four by seven around the cloud to maintain these servers. So to reduce these things, you you know, company should also maintain should go to this cost management part. They don't want you know the the, the long teams or the the absolute technologies, right? They they want to pay as you go, right? Earlier it was not the case, and the most important is the reduced downtime. So when I talk about the reduced downtime, it is about the reduced outage. So let's say if the application is earlier, what happened is. When there is a application down, you know people used to wait, but in in today's time nobody has a time to wait, right? So they want to reduce the downtime. So they want to adopt something which helps to reduce the downtime. Like if something if something happens in the production or something goes down, they need some automation or they need some tools which provides the self healing of the application. Um, they they want uh, something which Without any manual intervention, the issue can be resolved, right? You cannot call somebody at a two o'clock or three o'clock in the in the morning or in the night to fix the issue. So this will help you to reduce the downtime. So how do we address these needs uh, of the of the of the of the organization? So these needs can be can be addressed through a culture called DevOps, right? So. Before talking about DevOps, can anybody has any idea what is DevOps? If I say DevOps, what comes in your mind? Anybody? 
Okay. Ja. Yes, rightly said Punit. Thank you so much. So as Punit mentioned, it's a combination of software development plus IT operations. Both are working under the same umbrella. So earlier what happened, if you go back five years or 10 years down the line, we used to follow a software model where you know, <clears throat> the development teams you know, works on a certain uh, product, then there is a you know, waiting time period between the development and the testing. So tester has to wait, right? They, they until the product, the, the complete development does not take place, tester cannot perform the testing. So there is a longer wait period. And once the testing happens, uh, they find more bugs, they assign these bugs to developer, then developer fix it. Some fix are, you know, difficult to fix at that point of time because of, you know, cost issues and many issues, right? So there, there were a lot of challenges uh, in terms of, you know, waterfall model or the V model, what we are following, you know, previously. Then it then we adopted the Agile model. Now, the Agile model was, it says that, so as soon as the code is developed, it pushed back to testing. And based on the testing feedback or the issues, you can change your design or you can provide your feedback, change your design. That was Agile. But there is the problem with Agile is it does not talk about the operations. You cannot bring Agile uh, with operations. However, that when the DevOps introduced in 2009, it brings operations team as well into the picture. So earlier, there was a gap between development and operations. So it helps to bridge the gap uh, between these two team, right? So they are working simultaneously. Uh, every day so it helps to provide you know the cross scaling between the two team it helps to reduce the uh, dependencies between the each two layers so so earlier what happened is one of the developer is not available or if he if he led the organization or he is not available there is a there is a quite impact on the on the progress of the product but but in case of development it is it has been reduced to some extent and there's a faster release so if you see this diagram, you know, this infinity diagram, what it talks about, everything is, is being automated and everything is, so this is a complete software lifecycle model, right? From the integration to deployment, deployment in production. So what happened is initially we plan, we do the planning of the software or the product. Once the planning is done, then development or uh, developer, they create a, there is a software repository or there is a software management tool, SCM tool is there, where they push their code to uh, SCM tools, right? They do the coding on the, on the clips, they push the changes every day. So the moment they push the changes to the repository, it will trigger an automated build. So if we are working on a Java project, we have a, we are using a Maven build or Cradle, or if we are working on a .NET, we have a different build tool. So as soon as the build is, uh, the changes is committed to, to the repository, it will trigger an automated build. Once the build is successful, it will go through automated test. Automated test, so I'll talk about the different tools on, on each, for each phases, but I'm just giving you how this you know, tool chain diagram works. Then once the testing is passed, it is, ready for the release so if release in the sense it will be released to a qa environment a staging environment or the production environment right so there are different tools we use for the for the release like we have a configuration management tool like puppet ansible uh, chef these configuration tools can be used for the for the release then we have a, so that is called as deployment once it is deployed so deployed on where there, there are there could be many areas so we'll talk about the virtual machines it it can be deployed on virtual machines 
it can be deployed on docker environment it can be deployed on kubernetes environment through containerization then there is a operate so once the once you deploy the product you consume the product or you can access the product so there is a operations you operate it once the operation is done you will do the monitoring of the product at the same time so there are different monitoring tools available there are free source there is there is a, there are you know enterprise application as well right so this is about the devops uh, diagram and devops life cycle so anybody has any question at this at this point you can ask me okay okay so let's talk about what are the various benefits devops offers in in as a culture so we talk about speed yes that is the most important you know feature it provides when when you adopt a devops as a culture so with with the speed you can understand the the market situation what market is currently looking for you can understand your customer requirement better and you can analyze it and you can bring the changes sooner than than later right you can you can analyze your business right what business what what went wrong you know how do you improve your business what tools we have to adopt what are the changes has to be done right so with this devops you can adopt you can perform this but earlier when you go back to 10 years back there was no speed right everything was very linear there was you know people has to wait 6 months you know 8 months down the line to you know start the things to get the things and you know after that there is a lot of enhancement after that so imagine you are del delivering a product 8 months or 6 months or even a one year and after that also there is a enhancement so just imagine the situation what was down the line but adopting the devops culture these things has been changed you can analyze you can you know and you can realize very soon that what is the current situation and what 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 we have to do you know to grow our business at a faster rate then there is a rapid delivery yes delivery in the sense since everything is automated so as soon as the code is com code is committed you are ready to deploy so there is there is no uh, you don't have to wait for anything your your code is ready to to release uh, your product is ready to release to to the to the end user right then there is a reliability so reliability in the in the sense that you are maintaining the quality of your product so once you are maintaining the quality of the product you are gaining a customers feedback you are gaining the customers positive experience eh? and you are using you, how you are maintaining the re reliability through the continuous and continuous integration and continuous delivery okay so i'll talk about continuous integration and delivery in the coming slide so just understand that uh, terminology continuous integration and continuous delivery right then there is a improved collaboration yes earlier there was no collaboration between the team but coming to the devops it has bring developers and operations teams together that has so it 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 has bring the shared responsibilities between the two team right there there has been the cross scaling between the two and they they have it has reduced the inefficiencies also and saves a lot of time so so earlier when the developer is not not there to fix the code you know even anybody can look into it operations teams can look into it or if there is any merge has been failed or any change is required in operations teams can look into it but earlier there was there was no case because operation team is not aware of what developer is looking so there was a blame game in between so i'll give you one example let's suppose uh, if you go back 10 years down the line what happen is developer has developed the code they have tested uh, everything in their environment it was working fine so they have happily delivered it qa also done the same thing they tested everything in their environment they find it it's working they delivered when it goes to to the production when the operations teams you know deployed everything on the production or the customer ends they find that something is is not working right so what has happened in between that it was working on qa it was working on dev but is not working at at the customer place or it is not working in the production right so they so nobody want to take the responsibility what went wrong because 
the environment has changed or something some jar was changed or some there was a version issue we don't know but coming to devops everything is aware of what is what what changes is taking place who's who's using what so there is a complete transparency in terms of developing a software or in terms of developing a product earlier it was not the case and of course the most important is the security yes so so if if you see that i have written a term called devsecops what is devsecops development plus security plus operations right so you are providing a secure environment to your uh, infrastructure or to your product so security cat could be at a various level security could be at a infrastructure level security can be at the firewall level security at the vpn level you are providing security at each stages of your devops life cycle let's suppose you are using code coverage right so as soon as your code is you have uh, code is ready you when you run the when you start the automation it will pass the code coverage phase so let's suppose if it does not meet the code coverage criteria it means that your code is not ready to uh, there is some vulnerabilities issues there could be a security threats as well so developer has to fix the code by seeing the uh, the dashboard of sonar cube or let's say there are various code coverage tool in the market All right so this is uh, security at the code level then there is a security at the uh, so if you have application deployed at, at on docker or kubernetes so you are providing the security at container level using network policy you are using pod security policies we'll talk about this you know more in detail when we start the class i think somebody has okay right <clears throat> so there were the various security you are providing and of course when you are uh, migrating to the cloud so cloud itself provides their own security uh, level right so there is there, there so there is nothing compromised at the security level and your customers uh, are are quite happy to have such sec secure environment at place right so whenever you talk about devops you have to talk about you should talk about the devsecops devsecops is is something where uh, if your environment is not secure there is there is no point right you cannot uh, you cannot run your application even so production you cannot run it there is or there is always a threat to your application or to your infrastructure fine okay <clears throat> so continuous integration what do you understand by continuous integration anyone what is what is the word called continuous integration yes so continuous integration is nothing but uh, there is a team of developer they are developing on a they are working on a certain feature or certain product right so they are sharing their uh, code on a shared repository let's suppose they are sharing their code on github or they have their respective branches uh, they are sharing their uh, they are committing their code every day so so let's suppose there are team of five people and there are five branches and everybody is uh, committing their code in their respective branches then there is uh, there will be your team manager or your technical lead or somebody uh, who's who's actually owning this the the infrastructure is reviewing review your code right once the code review is done it can be merged to a main branch huh? so let's suppose the main branch is the master branch so as soon as the code is merged uh, all the five developers code is merged to a single or the main branch it will trigger a build every day it will trigger a build once the build is triggered it will 
go through the automated build and automated tests right so that is called as continuous integration you are integrating continuously right and developer has to commit at least there should be at least one commit every day so whenever and whenever you go go to work in a real time environment right so you have to take the latest copy of your main branch why i'm saying is so let's suppose uh, yesterday uh, there were 10 commit 10 changes has been done and today you are doing the 11th change but the 10 ch changes is not in your local and you are, when you're trying to push your changes that there, there will be a there is, will be a difference in the code so changes will so it, it won't reflect right so you have to fix that part so that is why we call the term as continuous integration it has to be always in a sync with everyone so what is the benefit of continuous integration very simple you can find your detect your error very easily as soon as the automated build is run you will come to know or automated test is run you will come to know what went wrong on which line number the code is failing what are the dependencies is not installed currently huh? and based on that you can take a proper action you can fix it easily so so how so what is the other benefit it pro, it improves your code quality of course the code quality is improved so tomorrow if you if you deploy it on a production there is a less chances of finding these bugs because you are integrating it every day and you are fixing it every day yeah <clears throat> fine okay now let's talk about continuous deployment and delivery so this is one of the interview questions and i have taken many interviews but i did not find the, the i always find the different different answers from from each one try to understand what is continuous deployment and delivery right so what happened is uh, tell me your understanding of continuous deployment or delivery if anyone has any idea don't make it interactive you know don't be shy you know we know we make mistakes but it but it's okay Okay. Okay. And what about the so this is about deployment or delivery? Okay, and what is delivery? Okay, fine, thanks. See, uh, what happened is uh, continuous deployment. So if you see the, see the different phases, there is a code, there is a build, there is a QA stage, there is broad. So as soon as the code is ready, you know, as soon as you have done the changes in your source code management tool or your GitHub, it triggers a build, right? So once it triggers a build, it will either create a jar or a war or it, it do the packaging, right? So you take this product and a product, the war file or jar file, you do a deployment, you deploy it on a QA server. So QA environment automatically so once qa has done certain testing like functional testing or acceptance testing or integration testing whatever it is right it will next pass to the staging environment or we call it as a pre-pod environment so as soon as the staging is done it is automatically deployed to the production it is automatically deployed to the production which is continuous deployment However, if you see this continuous delivery, there is an arrow between stage and prod. Why? So, as soon as you come to a stage, come to a place, come to that particular staging environment, you cannot deploy to the production automatically. You have to have certain approvals 
you have to have certain checks you have to have follow certain you know your based on the company's criteria you have to follow certain you know process maybe it could be anything it could be certain email follow up or the customer follow up a customer approval there could be any approvals right but in deployment there is no approval in terms of deploying to the production so very simple example of continuous deployment we have seen about the the big billion shell sale right flipkart sell what happen is as soon as the the code is ready it is deployed to the production we don't need any approval we don't wait for a certain times or certain hour because if we wait we can lose you know we can lose the business so there is straight deployed to the cust- uh, production environment but if you, if you see uh, the continuous delivery there could be some certain applications which can which can wait for two two days or you know two hours based on the the amount of time required for the approvals but in in that case you cannot wait everything is very agile everything is very dynamic right if you see you know when you once you refresh something you know you you see different images you will see different offers hmm? so that is what a example of continuous deployment so this is a interview question should understand it yes yes talk about both so there is there is a very small difference between though it is you know it is a huge impact in terms of uh, uh, the environment but the difference is you need approvals you cannot everybody cannot touch production environment right it depends on the company process as i said you have to you know sit with the people you have to understand why we need a change you have to provide the justification you have to find the error you know it depends it depends on organization to organization what kind of approvals what is what is their criteria of you know approving the things it it is not something that static you no know, to the point it is dynamic right please hmm. yes 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 so continuous deployment is everything is automated automated way of deploying to the production environment right so as soon as as soon as the build is triggered right as soon as you have committed something it is directly deployed to the customer environment or to the production you don't need any approval right so and changes changes will reflect to the end user immediately right i i give you the example of big billion sale right you, we are not waiting for for approvals as soon as there is a change you know it is straight forward deployed to to the production in a, in a automated fashion and if you refresh something you will find you know there is a change in it is very dynamic but not in a case of delivery you have to follow the approvals the customer approvals or you have to follow certain guidelines it depends on how your organization you know defined your continuous delivery hmm? yeah okay. any question so now so till now we have we talked about development code let's talk about something about the operations point hmm? let's talk about something from the operations point infra infrastructure management so infrastructure management means what 
so earlier we have you know physical servers we have a dedicated servers for certain applications we have around the clock you know there is a you have to provide electricity you have people dedicated to it and it has a lot of cost involved in it then that particular physical server and dedicated room or you know location has been changed to a virtualization means you have a hypervisor hypervisor like uh, vmware tool or oracle virtual box there are many other hypervisor so these tools help you to provide a virtualization of the uh, images or infrastructure where you can create a virtual machines and you can run your application on top of it so these these things has been replaced from physical to virtualization and from virtualization it has been migrated to containers and it is still migrating uh, there are a lot of companies still have not adopted this container technology but yeah down the line they will adopt these because maintaining this virtualization is is quite challenging but containers are very lightweight so everything is you know just you shipped in in container and you are you are good to go so this is this is about uh, infrastructure management you are maintaining your company's infrastructure so earlier we are maintaining through the physical servers now we are maintaining through the virtualization then we are maintaining through the containers and our application are running on on through these technologies right <clears throat> now let's talk about the interesting difference between the virtualization versus containers why we why we are talking about containers why the world is shifting to containers why not virtualization and uh, <clears throat> so if you see this uh, virtual machines what what is a virtual machines how what does it offer so like let's suppose you are sitting in front of your laptop right so in the laptop there is a hardware device is present so on that laptop you have your host operating system like windows 10 if it is a windows operating system if it is a linux then it is a ubuntu or red hat right then you install hypervisor tools like virtual machines or oracle uh, or uh, uh, vmware hypervisors or oracle hypervisors on top of your operating system so once you install hypervisors so hypervisor itself is a, is a is not a, itself is a uh, heavy software it consumes lot of uh, space in your uh, host machine now to install uh, uh, operating system what you do you have iso image you install an iso image so it's a complete iso image which could be of 2 gb or 3 gb so when you install operating system on using hypervisor tool you have to allocate certain hard disk from your host machine it eats certain ram right and it's a complete operating system so let's suppose uh, i'll give you very easy example let's suppose your current configuration of laptop is 8 gb ram so if you install around 5 to 6 virtual machines on the same laptop you can easily end up with eating 5 6 gb of ram and when you run any application on top of it it will eat up the the rest of your ram or your your storage you cannot do that you cannot afford so you have to have more kind of physical servers to install these kind of hypervisor so let's suppose some of the applications needs you know 100 of virtual machines it is not possible you need a high end servers to accommodate you know these kind of infrastructure so so this is the problem with virtual machines these problems is now overcome in terms of containers how let's talk about again so there is a laptop in the laptop there is a you have installed of your operating system on top of operating system you have installed a container engine i'm not talking specific to docker right now because that is a detailed discussion in in the coming classes so container engines are basically docker 
Container engines are rocket and they are Mesos software. These are called container engines. They are very lightweight to install on your operating system. So you have substituted your hypervisor with container engine. So there is no hypervisor now. From container engine, there is no guest OS. It means that you have saved your RAM, you have saved your hard disk spaces. So the container engine, on top of container engine, there are containers. Containers are very lightweight. So now if you go to virtual machines back, so the guest operating system will have so let's suppose I want to install Java or Java JDK on my hypervisor operating system. It will have the supporting files of JDK like binaries and libraries. It will have a redundant file also which is not been used at least for JDK. Right because that is the reason it is big in size. But in case of containers it is not like that. It is it will only have the supporting files required to run the particular application app only. Getting my point. That is why it is very lightweight. So in a container there is a there is a supporting OS files to run application one or to run application two. There is not any redundant files which can make the container a very you know heavy in nature that is why they are lightweight it is only limited to that particular application so whenever so what is a container container is a process a process is running it is a container if the process stops container dies that's it yeah so when a container runs what happen is it it does not have any kernel container does not have kernel however the guest operating system in hypervisor is a kernel that is why they they we allocate uh, ram we allocate hard disk hard disk spaces however in case of container there is no kernel so when you start the container or when the container is running it uses operating system kernel right it does not it uses operating system kernel not in case of unlike a virtualization which uses which already have a kernel so there will be two kernel there is an operating system kernel the host operating system as well as there is guest OS but in this case it is using the host operating system kernel that is why they are very lightweight so typically if when when you actually start working on the containers or the docker when you start using these tools, you'll find that the hardly uh, the containers is probably you know 300 MB in size, 400 MB in size, or probably 50 MB in size or 20 MB in size. But let's suppose if I want to install Apache, Apache Tomcat on guest operating system, ultimately you have to install a complete operating system. But in case of container, you only need a Apache Tomcat to run, you don't need any other thing, right? So you'll take the respective image of that and you'll start. You will start your Apache Tomcat on a container. So it will have a less space, right? <clears throat> any question in this? The difference between virtualization and containers. Why, 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 con how containers overcome the problems which virtual machines is having because this is also an interview question and this is a very basic question okay okay so let's talk about the infinity slide so last time i showed you if you remember this slide i just talk about the different phases now let's talk about the slide with terms of the tools also so at the at the coding level what what are the different tools we are using we are using git we are using eclipse right there are there could be various tools just i have shown a couple of it but there could be many tools for you know github is there there is gitlab is there you know there are so many tools 
so we are maintaining so we are maintaining our code repository at these places right then we have a build so for build what we are using we are using apache ant we are using gradle we are using maven uh, for test what we'll have we'll have selenium uh, for functional testing we are here j unit testing we can use uh, uh, you know j meter as well for uh, load testing you have a load storm as a for the testing you can integrate any any tool testing tool at this stage then we have a release phase for release you are using jenkins jenkins is nothing but a continuous integration and continuous deployment tool you can also integrate and you can also deploy from jenkins all right so you are you are using jenkins for releasing your um, software or you are releasing your jar file or war file whatever it is then you have a deployment so deployment you are writing config infrastructure as a code to deploy on on a target server so what are the infrastructure configuration management tool currently in the market which is puppet chef then there is ansible Hmm. There is a there is a salt stack. So these tools comes at the deploy stage. Then we have operate. So operate we are using Docker, VMware, or Kubernetes. There could be Oracle I server also. There could be AWS server. There is Azure server. You know, there the list is there is never ending list. Then we have using the monitoring continuous monitoring. So monitoring what we are using we are using Splunk. Splunk we are using nagios we have a new relic we have a prometheus we have a grafana we have a complete now even the cloud service provider also offering the the monitoring services you can monitor your virtual machines you can monitor your containers you can monitor you know every resource you want to monitor on, on cloud so the list is never ending so we'll we'll talk about so so the scope of this particular class is that we are covering docker we are covering kubernetes we will talk about one cloud provider which is azure we will talk about uh, how ci cd works with azure devops and then we'll talk about how to deploy application on azure in moment uh, through azure kubernetes service and how to build a complete pipeline uh, on azure so that will be the 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 scope of this particular class we are not covering uh, how to how the git works and how this maven works this is out of scope of this class the target is to cover docker kubernetes and the azure part so guys any questions please feel free to ask i think we have already closed crossed our time